guest out from the, the Linux Foundation. Jim Zemlin is here, and Jim's going to join me on stage to talk a little bit about the evolution of openness as it relates to networks. So, Jim, can I invite you out? Hey, John. Hey, yeah. Okay, I'm going to start with a question that you weren't expecting. Okay. Uh, did you ever expect there'd be a day you'd stand up on stage as the Linux Foundation CEO and talk about open source with a large telecommunications <laughs> carrier by tradition? Not by tradition. You know, so uh, two pieces of good news there. One, AT&T is a software company now, uh, which is just amazing, which you've been leading this transformation to uh, you know, a software-defined networking infrastructure. But then AT&T is an open source uh, software organization supporting us and doing this. It's just uh, I have to pinch myself a little. Good. Awesome. I can pinch you. Take it easy. <laughs> uh, but the developer audience, they're well aware of the Linux Foundation and your efforts over time, what you stand for, what you do. Um, at a high level, tell us a little bit about what you're most excited about in 2017, the year to come yeah. in, in Linux. Yeah, I mean, this is, so this is a big year uh, for open source, particularly for open source and networking. You know, I think it's appropriate that we're here at CES and Jay Gordon Levitt's talk, I, I thought, was so uh, powerful uh, and proves the powerful nature of communities. Um, you know, Linux has produced over a $10 billion collective R&D investment. 10,000 lines of code are added to, 7,000 lines of code are subtracted to, and 1,800 lines of code are modified in Linux every single day. Th this is the incredible power of community. And at CES, go around and look at drones, consumer cameras, televisions. 80% of the code in all of those devices is open source. That's the fundamental power of open source. Nobody builds anything these days without using open source software. Why? There's simply too much code for anybody to write for any one organization to write it themselves. And so I'm most excited about, and this comes back to AT&T, I think in networking, we finally are at a point where there is production-ready code out there in open source that end users, companies like AT&T, small operators, application developers can finally take advantage of. That's a big, big shift in the industry. That's great. Uh, well, what can you share if you, about the progress of Cloud Native Computing Foundation, the progress they're making, and what do you see next for this organization as you set new sets of like container technology strategies, that kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, you know, I see AT&T is already leveraging container technology in your infrastructure. And, you know, containers and microservices are really displacing virtual machines as the modern foundation for application development. And I think most of you developers out there know this. The thing that's really exciting in the container world and in the microservices world is the fact that with OCI, after how many decades in the software industry that we've tried to create a write once, run anywhere implementation, yeah. containers can really fulfill that promise. That's a huge promise. Managing those containers, Kubernetes, which is a project that the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, if you measure it times number of developers times pull request, it is the fastest growing open source project out there. Tremendous momentum. We're finally getting to a point where we're all going to really benefit. Awesome. Well, I, I mentioned earlier, kind of getting specific within the tent of AT&T, of our intention to open source e-comp with the Linux Foundation, which we're really thrilled to do. Thank you for believing in us. Um, how do you foresee developers contributing to e-comp kind of in the near horizon, if you will? Yeah, so we're working hard right now to build out the organization, to get the e-comp code out into the open. Now, remember, this is production used code. Like you're using this right now to run your network. And it's a big chunk of code. It's a big chunk, millions of It's not one of these of little things that, that grows in open source. It's 8.5 or so million it's lines a huge, of code. It's a huge code base. And so there's going to be opportunities. And we already have commitments from organizations that are going to come in and work at the infrastructure layer to even pr improve what's already there with e -comp. 
there's going to be uh, opportunities for developers to finally now reach down into the networking layer by being able to go in, look at eComp, help work with that community to define APIs so that they can take advantage of network security features and other manageability features. And that is not something where you need to you know, have someone bring the requirements from the fax machine to the developers. Anybody can go into the project, participate directly with the developers, and we're super excited about that prospect. So what are the challenges that lay ahead if you think about the developer community and, and how can they help areas like communications, entertainment, business services, as you think about the, the scope of what this is going to cover, wh what sort of services and things, problems do you see them solving? Oh, I think it's an amazing, as you know, the, your network gets abstracted into software, developers now have a tremendous amount of power to enable, uh, sorry for the shameless plug, a, a $35 a month, 100 channel, you know, that's a massive demand on the network. Developers are going to be able to directly impact Through that. January 9th, I'll point out. <clears throat> Fair enough. <laughs> e even at the post-promotion price, pretty impressive offering. The point is, there's a huge amount of data that's going to be streamed everywhere, put tremendous pressure on the networks, and developers are going to be able to have a direct hand in not only enabling these kind of great consumer offerings out there at a low price, but also making the world better by participating in the code that's going to run most of society. You know, open source code powers every major stock exchange in the world. It's creating immutable distributed ledger technology that will track blood diamonds and provenance. And individual developers, all of you out there, can directly impact these huge outcomes. And, you know, I thought it was funny. Jay Gordon Levitt said, you know, why do these, you know, people who are in the act of art do it? They should do it for themselves. Yeah. Well, you know what? We asked the Linux community why they do it. Did a study with Harvard. They do it for themselves. Because the act of all your developer creation is an act of mastering your craft, an artistic outcome that just so happens through projects like eComp and all the other networking projects we see at the LF really impact what is a modern network is capable of. And I think that's not just something that's going to better yourself or your company, but better the world. And uh, that's a pretty good place to be. Well, we, we have, uh, you know, it, it certainly feels like we're simpatico up here. It, you know, it, it, it wasn't easy to get here, right? <laughs> and I think it's important for people to recognize that when we said, who would we turn this code over to, Linux Foundation is kind of the big bet. But you have to commit resources and do things. You have to test the seriousness, the openness. And so um, we're thrilled to have you as a partner. We feel honored that the commitment we made, it's a sanctioning, if you will, for you guys to take it on. So we're looking for great things from you. I appreciate it. When I heard about the partner, you know, our projects do three things. We look for projects that solve a big problem, that offer the code free and open to everyone to work on and use, and that have the resources and commitment behind it to really make everything happen. And this project, we think, is one of the best, and we're happy to be working with you on it. Thank you very much, Jim. Thanks, Thanks for coming in today. Thank you.